So I'm a big believer in creating a kind of a unified view of the guitar neck, which is built from uh, different scales, different pentatonics, um, arpeggios all overlaid on top of each other, even different fingerings of the same scale as well. Because I find as if you can pull all of this information together, you get a much more holistic view of what's going on on the neck, and you can drift between one and the other quite easily. Um, one of the problems I find when you're first learning three notes per string, for example, is that the approach is very mechanical. It's all about the, the mechanics of playing three notes per string. It's not necessarily about the music, the underlying music that you're going to try and create. Whereas if you can start to bring in some of the learnings from elsewhere into to your knowledge of the three notes per string scales as well, you can suddenly draw in, in sort of influences and musical influences from the arpeggios. You can start to understand which notes to kind of emphasize and things like that. So a, a good starting point if, if you're in this phase of learning three notes per string is to understand the relationship between these scales and the pentatonic scale as well. And so that's what I thought I'd focus on this week. Now the big problem that you have when you're trying to, to harmonize the two, two sets of fingerings is the three notes per string scales tend to be quite diagonal. When you're working way across the neck, you find that your hand drifts further up the neck as, you, as you're playing across the scale, whereas the pentatonic scales tend to sit around a fret. They sit in one place. So what I like to do is to, to work on zones, to work on areas of the necks, work on sets of strings to start with and understand the relationship between the pentatonic scale and the three notes per string scale in one position to start with, just across a few strings, and then work my way up the neck doing that. And you find this, this kind of a hierarchy of, of a way of learning this, starting from the most important, which tends to be the treble strings, because that's where you spend most of your time when you're improvising. So if you can understand them first, that's a good starting point, then move on to the bass strings, and then start to look at how the two sets of learnings merge together in, in the middle somewhere. So, so let's zoom in and I'll show you how I, how I go about doing that. Now I've created a handout for all of this, so please just download the PDF and that's got the three notes per string and the uh, scale shapes all worked out. And if you don't know your three notes per string scales yet, then check one of my other videos. I go through this in, in a lot more detail and I show you a way of memorizing these scales really quite quickly. So if you don't really understand them yet, then check that series of videos out. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to work my way up a C major, A minor type key. Um, so I'll start with the first position pentatonic, which is just there. Hopefully you know that. And then the three notes per string scale shape I'm going to be playing with is this one. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually lining up that top E string, so my index finger is playing um, a note on both scales, yeah? And to start with, I just uh, explore the top three strings. There's my pentatonic. There's my three notes per string. Pentatonic. And the thing to do really is to just explore them, just play with them as I'm doing here. It's not an intellectual exercise, it's more a motor skill, it's more a motor learning. Understanding how the two scale shapes fit together. And where those extra notes are when you're playing the three notes per string. And we're focusing on the top three strings because those are the really crucial strings that you're going to be playing when you're playing any kind of lead work. So it makes sense to be really comfortable with these strings to start with. So that's the first position, and then we move up to the next position of the pentatonic. And you can see I've actually jumped a three notes per string scale when I do this. There's my pentatonic. And the reason for that is that I'm lining up my index finger again. And 
and we'll come back to that uh, in between shape a little bit later. But again, it's just getting used to. Just getting used to how the pentatonic and the scale shapes fit together just across those three strings. And then you move up to the next position. There's my pentatonic. Three notes straight. position. Three notes per string. You see how I'm just flipping between one and the other. And then finally the fifth position of the pentatonic. And again, we've jumped over a three notes per string scale. And then you back up to the uh, root position of the pentatonic again. Now once you've made your way all the, all the way up the neck like that, just exploring the pentatonic and the associated three notes per string scale, you can drop back to these in-between positions like this one. And just look how that fits over the, the two pentatonics that are either side of it. So this one sits pretty much on top of this second position. Position pentatonic. Right. And just to one side of the first position. Yeah, and you can look at that other missing piece which is just here. There's my three notes per string scale. The lower pentatonic. The upper pentatonic. And the three notes per string scale. Okay, so that's just focusing on the upper strings. The next thing to do is to go back and do exactly the same thing focusing on the lower strings. So you and you'll find it's you're working with a different or mostly a different three notes per string scale on the lower strings than you do on the upper strings. It's not always the case, but most of the time it is. positions again. And then once you've got that kind of under, under your hands, the final thing to do for me is to just look at the transition point between the lower half and the upper half of some of these pentatonics. So there's my pentatonic. There's the scale that sits on the upper half. And there's a scale that fits on the lower half. And then think about how you'd move from that, low, that scale to the so your hand doesn't move away from the pentatonic scale. So really what we're doing is we're thinking about how do I move between one three notes per string scale and another three notes per string scale so I'm sitting on top of that pentatonic, yeah? And if you want all of these worked out, these are exactly what the cage scales are about. So if you like, the cage scale gives you a sort of a transition point between one three notes per string pentatonic and the other three notes per string pentatonic, which is another reason why I think it's worth understanding cage scales as well. So hopefully you can see the best way of doing this, as I say, start with the treble strings, start with the, the scales that directly sit on top of each other and understand how those fit together. And then you can go back and work on the two uh, three notes per string scales that kind of sit in between two pentatonic positions. So that's the second stage. Third stage you're looking at the bass strings and see how they sit on top of the three notes per string scales. And fourthly, 
look at the transition point between the two three notes per string if you want to stay on the same pentatonic position. And as I say, if you, if you want to understand this in more detail, then that's exactly what the cage scales are about. You can do exactly the same exercise, and actually it's really useful to do exactly the same exercise when you work with modes as well, because with modes you're combining a different three notes per string scale with the uh, associated pentatonic scale. So the, the scales that you're harmonizing together are different when you're working on different modes. And again, I've covered that in other videos as well, so you should check those out. Hopefully that was useful for you anyway, and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.